E equals mc squared describes the relationship between energy and mass. It essentially states that mass times the speed of light squared is equal to its energy. The speed of light squared, of course, is absolutely huge. This relationship between mass and energy means that if we could convert even a small amount of mass into energy, we would get a ton of energy. Let's try doing that. Atoms are made up of a nucleus that contains protons and neutrons with one or more electrons bound to the nucleus. In some atoms, the number of neutrons or protons is too high for the nuclear force to hold the atoms together permanently. In this case, we say that the nucleus is unstable. Unstable nuclei will try to reach a stable level of energy by emitting protons or neutrons until they are stable. Such nuclei are radioactive until they have emitted enough particles to be stable. This phenomenon is called radioactive decay and is a type of fission. Fission, in short, refers to when the nucleus of an atom is split in half. This can happen spontaneously, like during radioactive decay, but there is a more interesting type of fission that can happen. Some nuclei are said to be fissile, but this means is that the energy that the nucleus gains from receiving a neutron puts it above its critical energy required for fission. Now, let's say we have a bunch of uranium-235 nuclei. At some point, a neutron might collide with one of these nuclei and the nucleus is split into two. A huge amount of energy is released along with two or three neutrons which can then collide with some other uranium-235 nuclei, releasing two or more neutrons each and you have a chain reaction. This reaction is an incredibly efficient way of releasing energy and is the reaction used in nuclear reactors as well as nuclear bombs. If we take enough nuclear fuel and pack it close enough together, we can force the fuel into supercriticality, which leads to an exponential growth of a nuclear reaction and you have a bomb capable of devastation and atrocities. Our discoveries of the laws of nature allow us to bend the world to our will. What we choose to do with science is up to us. If we take the other path, we can choose to harness this highly efficient method of getting energy for good. Let's build a nuclear reactor. We'll take some nuclear fuel like uranium-235, put it inside a bunch of thin rods and put the rods inside a tank. This will be our reactor core. Inside the core, we'll add a coolant, often water or molten salt, which will also serve as a moderator. Why? For two reasons. Firstly, when neutrons are released from the nuclear chain reaction, they are released with an immense velocity. These fast neutrons, as they are appropriately called, would just bounce around the chamber and are very unlikely to really propagate the nuclear chain reaction because of quantum mechanics. A moderator slows down these neutrons, leaving them as what are called thermal neutrons, which are way more likely to propagate the reaction. Secondly, this coolant allows us to circulate the heat outside of the core and into a steam generator. Here, steam is generated, which turns a turbine and creates electricity. Lots of it. The steam, now a lot colder, turns back into a liquid and is pumped back into the core again, where the whole process will repeat. Finally, we'll add some controlled rods to our reactor, which are made of a neutron poison. These rods can be inserted or taken out of the core as necessary to ensure that the chain reaction happens at a steady rate. And that's how a nuclear reactor works. Kinda, there are a lot of different types of nuclear reactors, but in principle, the concept is the same. Nuclear energy is quite a fascinating thing. Given the state of our rapidly changing climate, it would be wise of us to replace fossil fuels in favor of an energy source that doesn't entail removing carbon from the ground and pumping it into our atmosphere. Renewables like wind, solar or hydroelectricity will be the obvious long-term choice, but we're quite slow to adopt those, aren't we? Nuclear energy could be a transitional source of energy while we build more renewables. Nuclear energy is obviously not perfect though, with the nuclear waste that is generated from nuclear reactors. If only there was another reaction that could produce a ton of clean energy. That would be great, wouldn't it? This is a working nuclear fusion reactor. Let's go inside it. In here, the core of the star is where the magic happens, the fusion. Nuclear fusion, oppositely to nuclear fission, is when two or more nuclei combine. Interestingly enough, this process also releases a ton of energy because of the two opposing forces that are the Coulomb force and the nuclear force. Protons are positively charged, which means they repel each other. This is the Coulomb force. There is another stronger force though, the nuclear force, which allows the protons to combine. This force, however, is only strong at very small distances. For two nuclei to combine, therefore, there is a huge energy barrier that must be overcome. These conditions are met inside the core of the sun, as it's so huge that the pressure and the heat in the core essentially squeeze the nuclei together. When two small nuclei fuse, a ton of energy is released. It's this energy that powers the sun, and wouldn't it be great if we could do the same here on Earth? Slight problem though, we can't just take a piece of the sun with us back to Earth and use that for energy. 
The fusion in the sun works precisely because the sun is so huge. So, if we want to use fusion energy here on Earth, we're going to have to find different ways to create the conditions necessary for fusion to happen. As it turns out, that isn't all that difficult. Doing a little fusion is no problem, but if we want to create the proper reactions to generate a remarkable amount of energy, we're going to need to be creative. Currently, the two leading branches in the quest for fusion energy are magnetic confinement, which utilizes magnetic fields to create the proper conditions for plasma, and inertial confinement, which uses incredibly strong lasers to compress and heat fuel pellets. The biggest issue with fusion energy today as an energy source isn't the fusion reaction itself, it's turning a profit, an energy profit. We can create reactors capable of sustaining the right reactions, but doing so requires a lot of energy and the challenge is to get more energy from the reaction that we put into the reactor. It seems that producing a working fusion energy reactor that generates a net gain of energy is an immense challenge, but if we succeed we will have created a huge supply of clean energy for ourselves. So maybe we should keep giving it a try. Hopefully after all this you're motivated to learn more about the fascinating world of physics and science. If that's your case, I would recommend Brilliant, the sponsor of this video. Brilliant.org is a problem-solving website that teaches you STEM concepts interactively by guiding you through interesting problems. That way you can get an intuitive understanding of the concepts rather than just memorizing everything. If you are interested in the topics of this video, I'd recommend their fantastic astrophysics course where you can learn more about stars and the universe. Alternatively, you could learn about anything from quantum computing, to classical mechanics, to integral calculus with their vast and expanding selection of courses. Videos are great, but what they lack is interactivity. Brilliant allows you to go at your own pace with fun, hands-on and interactive lessons that boost your creative problem-solving skills and makes you learn at the same time. I actually used Brilliant.org to learn maths before they contacted me and I can strongly recommend it to anyone regardless of age or how much you know. Whether you want to do better in school or just want to get a better understanding of science, go to Brilliant.org slash Quabble or visit the link in the description to sign up for free. The first 200 people to sign up through the link will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. Thanks to Zaya Warfield for being a Patreon supporter.